Eurovision fam, it's Alicia and Michelle. I'm from Washington, D.C. Music can be feeling and fireworks. I got a new video. I got a new video. What do you think? Talk to me in the comments below. You know it. I made it. Hey. Thanks. Hey, Eurovision fam, it's Alicia and Michelle. I'm ready to go. Eurovision fam, are you ready for the show? <laughs> I got a new video. I got a new video. Hey, Eurovision fam. It's Alicia and Michelle. I am so excited today because a hurricane is coming through. Well, at least one third <laughs> of a hurricane is coming through. Thank you so much for talking with me today. How are you feeling? Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I'm feeling great. It's a great day. Uh, it's sunny outside, so I'm really uh, up for some conversations, positive ones. <laughs> Yes, yes. No, I'm so excited to have you. And I mean, okay, preparing for Eurovision, because y'all were supposed to be at Eurovision 2020. So can you just tell me what have you been doing over the past? I know it's been a lot, but maybe the past like two months to prepare, because now we're so close to like rehearsals and everything. Just give me a little snapshot into what your schedule has been, because I know it's been crazy. Yeah, well, well, we actually recently found out that we were elected, re-elected for representing Serbia again in 2021, actually in December. So we haven't uh, started the preparations right away. We uh, waited a little bit. We, mm, we um, tried to find the right song and everything. So we just started, like you said, like two months ago with, with the preparations. It was really turbulent. It's a crazy. It's, it's really tiring, but still it's a great honor to be, uh, to have that honor to represent your country on such uh, on, on such a such a competition. Uh, so we just gave our best. We are having a lot of rehearsals. We are having uh, stamina training. We have a lot on our plates. Yes, it's uh, it's difficult. It's tiring, but still, we're so happy and thrilled about it. I am so happy to see that y'all came back. Y'all are giving us our girl group energy this year. Yeah. Generally in the past, I have never been a solo artist. I always have been a part of a band, of a group, of a collective. That is, uh, that's how I, um, how I, um, how I'm used to work with, with a lot of people around me. So basically it was not really hard for me to share the spotlight with our, with two other people. It's just, it's, uh, it's great when you have two people that are your friends at the same time and you do uh, the same work, you try to, you're trying for the same cause and uh, it's, it's, a, it's helpful a lot. I can say from the perspective that I have, have already been to Eurovision and I have been alone on the stage singing. I had my backing vocals behind me uh, doing the choreo, the choreo and everything, but still this is, you have two more people that share the burden and it's really, <laughs> it's, it's better, I have to say. No, no, I totally agree. I think um, even when you ask Beyonce, she's like, I love having like Kelly and Michelle, like it's nice to kind of exactly. go on stage and kind of feel like that instant support of, of folks just right next to you doing exactly what you're doing on the stage. Um, so this has been a crazy, crazy turbulent year. And, you know, kind of looking at the positives of the past year, you know, we've been stuck inside a little bit more. So I'm wondering, have you picked up any hobbies or any like, uh, other than doing music, have you gotten into anything like in this pandemic moment? Well, yeah, we had a lot of time to reflect on ourselves, firstly, but uh, I, I adore languages. So I picked up some other <laughs> languages besides English and Serbian and Spanish. And I, I, I know a few, not, not, uh, I'm not fluent, but still I love, I love languages, love learning them. Uh, so I, that, that was my hobby, learning languages. No, I love that. I mean, actually, I think that was one of the big things people were like, if you don't come out of the pandemic with like a new skill, a new language, yeah. a new talent or something you have exactly. wasted <laughs> this year. All right. Well, the question that I want to ask, I've asked every single person this question, and I would have totally asked you this last year. So you could pick from 2020 or 2021. But if you could steal someone's song and put like the Hurricane Sonia Spin stamp on it, whose song from Eurovision 2020 or 2021? Or you could pick two. You could pick one from 2020 or one from 2021. Uh, I actually have two from 2021 that I adore. Uh, I love Ukrainian song. That's the kind of, uh, of music that I I listened when I was a kid and, uh, you know, the, the ethnic moment and the harsh moment, the hardcore, that's, 
that's totally me. And the song of Italy, Fitti e Buoni, that's totally my kind of vibe. I love it. I love that. Actually, I would be very curious to see like Italy 2021, like the hurricane spin on that. I think that would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Amazing. Would be awesome. I would be into would- that. Okay, well, I am the girl on YouTube that is always talking about styling. And even last year, I loved the reflective, like the styling that y'all had at the national selection last year. I think I even like posted on it. And I think the designer actually was like, thank you. (laughs) Cause I was like, I love the outfit. So I know you can't completely tell us what you're wearing on the stage, but if you could give us a little hint of what we might see styling wise from Hurricane on the stage. Yes. What I can tell you, it's going to be totally different from the grant for the national finals. It's not going to be nearly the same uh, as well. Uh, we, I mean, you know that we made the, the backup video as well. We had had totally different costumes for that as well. So we're not going to use those. We're, we're going totally different way. Uh, I can't really tell you what's, uh, what's going to be on the stage, but definitely it's going to be great. It's going to be uh, something that goes with us, with our energy, with the song, with the choreography. There's going to be a lot of choreography on the stage, a lot of dancing, a lot of singing. And still we want to show people that we can sing and dance at the same time, which is the most hard thing, thing to do ever uh, for me. <laughs> uh so we're gonna have uh, we're gonna use both stages we're gonna use the catwalk they're gonna be leds they're gonna be a lot of playing with the lights so you're gonna have a spectacle well that is what your vision is all about it is all yeah. about the spectacle and i'm so into that now i'm wondering did you happen to see the eurovision movie did you watch it oh my god i have not because i just recently got netflix and I'm first. I'm gonna have a, I have to watch a lot of TV shows, and then I'm gonna go to the movies. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, so you have to watch it, and then you have to get on social media and tell us what your favorite moment from the movie is. But I I have to say I am an American Eurovision fan. So a lot of Americans now kind of know about Eurovision because That's of great. the movie, or I should say, thanks to the movie. Uh, but. My question is, and because really my goal is to get more Americans to watch the Eurovision Song Contest. So if you had an opportunity to talk to American and, and you have 15 seconds or, you know, at least under a minute to basically tell them why they need to watch Eurovision 2021, what would you tell them? Go. <laughs> well, it's basically, it's a different aesthetic. Uh, it's really, uh, Eurovision is a crazy, crazy, totally crazy competition because you have like a uh, a TV show of two or three hours that it, it has uh, 42 different contestants and every single one of them has a different energy, has a different staging, has a different clothing, lighting, and it's like a circus. And definitely is, it's a, for Europeans, it's totally normal. But I guess for Americans, it's really over the top, overwhelming. And uh, everybody has to have that overwhelming moment and over the top in their life every single day. Like, sashay away, honey. Yes, I love that pitch. We we are definitely going to have more Americans watching Eurovision this year. I, I am positive that it will happen. Now, I, I wonder, because of, uh, you know, the pandemic and everything, you know, have you had an opportunity to um, maybe connect with some other Eurovision participants? Uh, and then my other question is, have you gotten any advice? I mean, you've already been on the Eurovision stage before, but have any other Eurovision uh, participants, or I should say, a um, giving you all some advice for your vision? Uh, we met some of the contestants. Uh, we met, actually, we, we speak to Albina often from Croatia. Uh, we met Vasto from uh, North Macedonia. Well, basically, the, the people from our surroundings, <laughs> the most easy. Uh, we talked to a girl from Slovenia. Oh my God, I can't remember her name now. Um, and, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, Anna. Uh, Anna, exactly, Anna, Anna. And uh, we got some advice from the past alumni Eurovision, and I had my experience as well. Xenia as well, she went with her, with her father in 2015. Uh, and uh, I mean, basically, it's not going to be the same as every uh, past year because we have some different, uh, different situations or surroundings and, and everything regarding the pandemic. So I'm just sad that we're not going to, experience your vision in the whole life that your vision is. Yeah, no, I think it'll be a different year. But one thing that I think is a benefit is I think that this could be possibly the most watched Eurovision song contest ever. I think folks are just 
looking for some joy, looking for a show, and this is going to give them all of that. So I am convinced that this will probably be the most watched Eurovision year. Well, I hope that you are ready because we're going to play a little game. And it's called This or That. Let's do it. (laughs) Hip hop or pop music? I have to say pop music. If you're going out and you have an option of a nude lip or a red lip, which lipstick are you going to go with? Nude lip, red lip, never. All right, if you're going to go out um, and say you have an option to wear an all black outfit or all white, what are you rocking? All black. Okay, and if you That's had to go on a trip, <laughs> if you had to go uh, on a trip, would you rather do a beach trip or like a ski trip? Beach trip. I hate winter. I hate cold. And if you were gonna do, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, like a cover. Would you rather do a cover of a Prince song or a Michael Jackson song? Michael Jackson song. I mean, I love them both, but Michael Jackson is one my favorite artist in the world ever. All right. (laughs) Well, you just played this or that. Thank you so much for talking with me today and best of luck on the stage. I'm sure y'all are going to burn it up in semi-final two. We're going to be rooting for you. Thank you so much. Bye. (laughs)